Ladies and gentlemen, the plant basers. <laughs> Did you know that on average, it takes 1,800 gallons of water to produce a single pound of beef? That's a lot of showers. It's a lot of bathtubs. Our global food system is the leading cause of biodiversity loss on the planet. And a lot of people are getting the message and switching to plant-based eating. So I wanna first start with one of my favorite companies, Impossible Foods. Um, Peter, so, I like Impossible because I'm biased, because I use Impossible Foods. Um, and although you are a fairly new CEO um, at Impossible and you come from a uh, dairy industry where 90% was dairy, uh, you now use food science to reduce the food's impact on the earth. What is your ultimate mission as a new CEO at Impossible? Yeah, thank you. Um, it's to make impossible more accessible and more available. And I think that's really a theme here. Um, I wanna make great products that people enjoy, right? We happen to be at Slutty Vegan, um, and I had two last week. Um, and make it more, it shouldn't be uh, a niche, it shouldn't be by coastal it shouldn't be at specialty stores, it, they should be products available for everyone. And also to um, invite people who consume animal meat to use and like our products, right? If we're gonna reverse climate change, it has to be mass. This can't be a small movement, it has to be a large movement. Um, and right now, the plant-based uh, meat industry is about $8 billion, but the total category of animals is 1.4 trillion. So we really haven't even started yet. And so a lot of people talk about the death of the plant-based meat category, and I say we haven't even started yet, so, um, and it hasn't even been established. So in order to do that, we have to get the narrative out there. And so we're sitting here with the owner of Slutty Vegan, who has an incredible restaurant lying out the door, serving all vegan food in a fun, approachable, creative, accessible way. And support and feed, Maggie doing amazing work, right? Fighting hunger through giving options that are plant-based and give sustenance and nutrition to people. And Daniel, who has the best restaurant on the planet, who's serving all vegetables. And so this is how you do it, right? You, it's action, not words, and it's availability and accessibility. Um, and I think that's what I hope to do as CEO. Well, we see the difference, and we appreciate you, <laughs> so thank you. Um, how many people here have been to 11 Madison Park? Okay, did you love it? Okay, great, they love it. <laughs> um, 11 Madison Park was named Best Restaurant in the World and has three Michelin stars, but in 2021, you did something super crazy and changed your entire menu to plant-based. Why on earth would you do that? <laughs> and is this a call to action for the food industry? <laughs> well, I, th I think we're very fortunate that we have had all the success leading up to it and um, reaching all these awards that at some point in my life were extremely meaningful. I was a professional cyclist before I started cooking, so I sort of definitely took sort of an athlete's mentality towards my profession, and winning was important. Um, the truth is, when we became the best restaurant in the world and we were on the mountaintop, um, it was actually, we were the least happy. And even on top of it, all these awards, we knew that were only these carrots in front of us that were sort of like a motivation uh, for ourselves, for the team to make the restaurant better. And it worked really well, but the moment that carrot in front of us was gone. It felt really disorienting, and we didn't really know where we're going next. When the pandemic happened, which was devastating for our industry, we went from very busy to no business overnight. Uh, we lost a lot of our team because people work with us from all over the world. And you know, when you say in real estate, it's location, location, location in restaurants. It's people, people, people. So like when we lost, you know, our biggest asset, it was brutal. But um, 
I'm a co-founder of an organization called Rethink Food. And during the pandemic, I decided to turn 11 Madison Park into a community kitchen. And in the year and a half that we were closed, we cooked over a million meals in the 11 Madison Park kitchen for people in need. And what it did, <laughs> What it did, it, it really connected me to the city in a beautiful way. I've been here 20 years, but I've never felt like more like a New Yorker as I did during the pandemic. And it connected me to my craft and my language of food in a different way. So then when it was time to reopen 11 Madison Park, um, I knew that I had changed. And I knew that I had a responsibility to use my language to do good. And you don't need to be an expert, and I'm by no means a climate expert, but you can spend five minutes on the internet and you can realize very quickly that the way we eat is one of the largest contributor to climate change. And so that's what sort of like I felt after I had climbed this first mountain, and maybe there it was more about my own ego and reaching these awards, now I felt like we could climb a new mountain that had a much higher cause than winning accolades. Are you happy about that decision? Yeah, I'm super, <laughs> I'm super happy. I'm, there's moments where I still like, kind of almost shocked that we had the courage to do this because it is so radical. And 11 Madison Park is, was well known for butter poached lobster and, and duck and foie gras and all in the, the you know? So it's really radical to sort of move away from anything that we were known for. And, um, you know, on, on paper, it looks mostly good. It's mostly a success, but it is hard as, as everyone on this panel. I know we talked earlier, but it's, it's hard because in America, I think people feel so much about that food is their identity and, and taking away meat feels like it's taking away part of who they are. And I want to say one thing. I, I believe, although 11 Madison Park is 100% plant-based, I believe that it's, we all, it, it's more about progress than it is about perfection. And I think if we can all just do better, if everyone can eat half as much meat, that would be a great thing. I think sometimes um, we live in a world that where someone is trying to make change and people are trying to attack the, game, the changers because they're not perfect. Well, I admire the bravery. Yeah. Maggie, the goal of Global Citizen is to end poverty. Your organization, Support and Feed, which I love, shares an ambition by using plant-based food to feed those in need while also supporting the community and sustaining the earth. Can this really work on a global front? And how do we make this accessible to everyone? Well, let's start with the fact that when you're addressing uh, food insecurity and hunger, you cannot extricate that from climate change. And when you talk about climate change, you have to talk about animal agriculture. And I'm pretty sure that those two words, animal agriculture, have just been uttered for the first time at this conference. And that is not acceptable. We have got to address animal agriculture when we talk about climate change. So the mission of Support and Feed originally began because we wanted to feed people. At the start of the pandemic, we knew that people needed food, and we knew that restaurants were going out of business, especially plant-based restaurants. We thought, well, let's, let's support both, and we'll address climate change because we'll make sure and feed everyone plant-based food and address climate change by doing so, and give people a nourishing and delicious restaurant quality meal, and support the local economy that we know is so important to our communities. So this was a system that we thought was a, an emergency measure. 
But when we stepped into the world of food insecurity, we realized that these were not connections that most organizations were making, not most organizations that feed people literally millions and millions of meals. And yes, you can say that the greatest mission of those organizations is to keep people alive, but while you're keeping them alive, how about giving them a respectful meal that is nourishing for them and is not destructive to the planet? So this became a much larger mission. We serve our meals primarily to community organizations that are already doing amazing work, particularly in food apartheid, where people lack access to nourishing food. And that's where we can make this massive impact, not only to combine all these elements and support the work of local communities, but hopefully impact many, many organizations of much bigger nature than ours to add plant-based meals at least 50% plant-based meals. And organizations also, any institutional food organization like school systems, colleges, prisons, places like airlines. If you want to reduce your carbon footprint, make more of your meals plant-based. These are basically simple ways that you can affect massive cultural change at the same time. I love that. So I know that you and, um, yes, that's amazing. And what's even more amazing is that you and Peter have been doing some amazing things together with Support and Feed. Um, Peter, how do you feel like more companies can hop on uh, the positive bandwagon to like communicate um, this crisis and like really make it better? Yeah, I think, I think all, you know, we're the global citizens. I think companies should be global citizens and they should have a conscience. Um, and I think um, conscious capitalism is a bit of an overused term, but I think, look, we're not going to solve the climate crisis through NGOs or through organizations alone, right, or governments. We're going to need the private sector to step up and have a conscience. And, um, and part of that's for us to push them in that direction, and part of that is them to be open to being pushed, right? You say people go against the changers, right? We get all sorts of things from the meat industry, right? As we sell more plant-based. They don't like that and they attack us and they are well-funded and they are well-coordinated. And I think what Maggie said also is it's not a binary black and white thing. I'm not sitting here saying everyone tomorrow has to eat 100% plant-based. If half of your diet was plant-based, it would be the, the scale. Food choice is the number one way to reverse climate change. Most pe and that's an education process. Most people think it's recycling. Great idea, continue to do it. Most think, people think it's electric vehicles. Great idea, you should have one. That will not reverse food choice at $1.4 trillion worth of animal products consumed is the number one weapon that we have to combat climate um, change. So that is not a widely known thing, right? And that's why, thank you for Global Citizens getting us together, because you had, you know, we can just sit here, and Maggie and I were talking in the back that we've done things in the past and we're gonna do more together, and we're now more committed than ever. We make plant-based products. You're feeding communities that are underserved, that are either malnourished or food insecure or hungry or impoverished in some way, which shouldn't be in 2023 in America, it's crazy. And we should all be angry about that, frankly. And so we make food. You deliver food to people in need. Why don't we forge a deeper, more committed partnership in the future? So we're committed to doing that. Um, and that was just by us talking, being here together. Um, Thank you. So you're welcome. I Thank love that. So Maggie, what is your call to action by way of um, support and feed? Support and feed has been fortunate to partner with um, musicians such as my daughter, Billie Eilish, to uh, join her on her world tour. We're now on tour with Paramore. We're at Something in the Water, Pharrell's Festival this weekend. When I say we're there, what are we doing there? We're there to meet young people and ask them to take our pledge to eat at least one fully plant-based meal a day for 30 days. And we would love you to take that pledge as well. And when I say plant-based, that means meat, that means dairy. You may know that 18,000 cows recently died, perished in a horrific explosion because of methane gas in West Texas, meat, dairy, eggs, and seafood. All of that 
one fully plant-based meal a day, so none of those products, for at least 30 days. If you could take that pledge, 10,000 people take that pledge, that's 7 million gallons of water alone saved. That doesn't even speak to all the other issues. So we're asking you to take that pledge, join the hundreds of thousands of, of music lovers around the world who've taken that this year, and join us. You can make a huge difference. How many volunteers we got to take the pledge? Okay, I, I see like 10 hands and counting, awesome. Okay, we have time for one more question. Chef Hume, you have said that it is your message um, that it's not anti-meat, it's pro-planet. Please tell us what you mean by that. <laughs> Close us out strong. Well, I, I think it goes into what I said earlier about it's, it's about progress and, and, and not perfection and I think I know I've, the word vegan is kind of polarizing to to many, and um, I, I, I think we need to, and, and it's sort of like for, for a very small niche, I, I feel, of, of, of group of people who, who are vegan and declare themselves as vegan. I, I hear so many things like, I would never, and we have it, we have people who would never come to a restaurant because we're a vegan restaurant. They say, I'm not going to a vegan restaurant. It's just like, so I think um, we don't wanna go against anyone. We want this, we wanna make this a positive thing. And we're not against meat, but we are pro-planet and it is so obvious that we need to reduce how much meat we eat. Like, there are so many reasons why you could even arrive at that place, and we're talking a lot about climate today, but of course there's also people who arrive there because of animal cruelty. There's other people who arrive there because they go see some of those meat farms and they're like, I, I don't wanna eat that anymore because of health reasons, because it's all using so much antibiotics and stuff. But then there's one reason that cannot be ignored by anyone, and it's the fact that there won't be enough to feed the planet. There is a number I just read that 80% of all the farmland is used for animal farming, and it only accounts for 11% of the calories that are produced in farms. So I, I, I think we just all have to change. Um, and it's a positive thing. Change and is good. And it's a beautiful thing. Like it's expansive, plant-based vegetables. It's full of magic and beauty and there's no sacrifice. It's better over there. Change, it, change <laughs> is definitely good. And no please, labels. Please give it up. We have to wrap, I'm sorry. But please make sure you support um, 11 Madison Park, support and feed Impossible Food. We need more solutions and with your help we can get to those solutions.